When does Okabe fall in love with Kurisu? He becomes infatuated with her when she shows him that she's better than him. <laughs> and again when she shows him that she's just like him. <laughs> but I think it's when she shows him that she's not just his equal, not just his friend, but someone he can truly rely on, that he really falls in love with her. <laughs> what is the first thing he does when he time leaps? He tells the other lab members to leave because he doesn't want to put them in danger. One of his friends dies and he can't bear to see another get hurt. He tells them to leave and locks the door, sitting alone in the lab, the gentle drip of the tap being the only sound piercing the brooding silence he's trapped himself in. He sits there, alone in the dark, unmoving, staring at his phone as the numbers on the clock slowly ascend, once per minute, each minute an instant, and also an eternity, because in this moment, time is everything and nothing, all at once. They're just numbers on a clock, but they represent the endless void of the universe, wrapped up in these four digits as he sits there, pondering the nature of existence. And he finds no way out, because though he doesn't realize it, he can't do it alone. He needs Kurisu, and he doesn't realize it, but she does. And this is why it's important that Kurisu realizes her love for him first, because it helps her realize that not only does she need him, but he needs her too. So, when she sees that he's time-leaped, she reaches out to him every single time. Again and again and again, she finds him lost in the sea of infinity and reaches down to take his hand. And he keeps pulling away, afraid of hurting her too, because he's in love with her. And he keeps running until he finally realizes that he loves her. Realizes that no matter how mad this scientist is, no matter how great the mighty Ho in Kyuma, there is an even greater, mightier, madder scientist waiting for him. <laughs> This is the moment he realizes that she truly understands him. She takes this goofy bit of his character and turns it into one of the most tear-jerking moments in the entire show. When he can't bring himself to be the mad scientist, Kurisu becomes it for him, knowing what it is and knowing what it stands for. And how does Okabe feel knowing that this girl sees him for the man he really is? All we need to do to peer inside Okabe's heart is to look at Kurisu's face. We're not just looking at her expression, what we're seeing is Okabe's point of view. We're not looking at her straight on, we're looking up at her as she looks down on him. To Okabe, here, in this moment, she's beautiful. What we see is Kurisu's affection, but what we feel is Okabe's as he gazes upon the most beautiful girl in the world. <laughs> and though this is just one Kurisu on one world line, throughout his journey, he realizes that no matter when, no matter where, no matter what world line he crosses, he always can and he always will be able to count on her. He falls in love with her anew every single time and he realizes that he will always love her, no matter which Kurisu it is, because every single one of them is her. Every one of them adds up to a single Kurisu. And leading him back to the lab after hearing him pour his heart out, she lets him just a little further into hers and tells him about her innermost desire. Okay. 
They don't kiss for a few more episodes, but this is when they realize how in love each of them is. So when he time leaps, it isn't dramatic, it isn't emotional. She looks at him with bright eyes as he leaps into the past. This look isn't a farewell, it isn't a good luck, it's an I care about you. And as he opens his eyes and sees the world exactly as it was, exactly the same, this is nothing short of fucking brilliant writing. Because the world hasn't changed, but he has. He's gained the love of Kurisu. And him gazing upon the lab, the world once at peace as Mayuri puts the finishing touches on her costume at the same moment the time leap machine is completed. It's saying that this is the start line. This is where it ends, but so too is where it begins. Everything ends and begins right here in this one single moment. And so after building and building and building this tense emotional climax, it's almost jarring how hard it cuts the tension in half, cuts back to the silly shit when she refuses to believe him. <laughs> The tone of her voice is fucking perfect here, and it reminds us that these aren't heroes, they're just regular people dicking around. Welcome back, by the way, to my series analyzing, in depth, literally every single episode of Steins Gate. This is episode 14. So, join me next week when I break down the funniest line in Steins Gate. If that sounds amazing, and if you like this episode, you'd be doing me a huge favor by stepping on the like button. Stay tuned, and as always, thank you so much for your time, friends.